Hey all, it's RC with Compass Marine and MarineHowTo.com and we're here today in the shop working uh, on the video portion of an article on automatic combining relays. Uh, this is a Blue Sea ACR automatic combining relay and what that means is that it parallels two banks when charging voltage is present and it will isolate them when it's not present. On the bench, we've got set up an Odyssey TPPL AGM, one of the highest cranking capacity AGM batteries you can buy. On the left, we have a house bank consisting of three 105 amp hour AGM batteries. Uh, we have a fluke meter measuring the start battery voltage, and I just, I just hit the start button, so that voltage is still climbing back up. Uh, we have a starter motor on the bench to simulate a real boat. Um, we have a Fluke uh, 179 over here measuring the AGM battery bank voltage. We have a Fluke 376 set to capture inrush when this combines. And first off, the main point of this particular video is to dispel the myth that I hear from boaters and customers and readers all the time. And that is, I'm afraid of an ACR because I'm concerned about the massive inrush currents that happened between the battery banks and a guy in the dock told me that my my batteries are going to explode if I use an ACR because there's so much current transfer between banks and if you understand Ohm's law and batteries and electricity batteries are, are just a, 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 they have an internal resistance and then voltage between the battery banks determines how much current can flow from one bank to the other and we need to remember that this is a paralleling device so when this comes up to combine voltage green light would come on there um, what we'll see is it, once i start the charger is that after about 30 seconds or so this will combine and we're going to get an inrush reading here and that inrush reading is a very very fractions of a second extremely fast measurement of the peak the maximum peak inrush current that is flowing from the start battery into the house bank and the second part of this video is to show why on a cruising boat we certainly do not want to feed charging directly to the start battery first when using an acr and in this case the charger up top and this is our discharger that we discharge the house bank with and over here is our power supply, uh, which is our battery charger for today. It's a variable benchtop power supply. And what we've got is the output of that charger running over to the start battery. And then the relay will combine and charge a house bank. But we have a house bank at a low state of charge. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fire up the charger right now. And... The charger is going to bring the start battery almost instantaneously, as we can see, up to combined voltage. Now there's a delay built into the ACR so that you know certain uh, transient voltage scenarios can't cause the, the relay to combine and then uncombine, combine, uncombine. But we're going to see in just a few seconds the combined light will come on. We're going to get an inrush reading over here. And that's going to show us the absolute maximum peak current that is transferred between banks. And there we have it. I mean, I could run the Ohm's Law calculations for you. But in many instances, it is much, much, much easier to uh, see the, the amount of inrush current right on the screen. And there it is, 172 amps transferred maximum peak amount between a, th a thin plate pure lead AGM which can deliver uh, the most cranking capacity of just about any lead acid battery into another AGM bank 172 amps that is nothing um, it, it's really a, a, a very low number and the charger is set at 14.7 volts roughly oh look what uh, look what just happened The relay opened okay and the reason for that is what we were talking about we have a heavily depleted house bank so we've now seen the inrush but what we just witnessed is what we call relay cycling and that is that 
this relay senses voltage at either side. So the start battery came up to target voltage. The relay combined with a heavily depleted house bank. But it's going to take some time to bring that voltage up to 13 volts and maintain it there. It just combined again. This is the relay cycling that we're talking about. We can see the house bank voltage climb. And we can see these two voltages start to come together. But the relay, if, if that doesn't happen fast enough and the current can't maintain it, it's going to disconnect again within 10 seconds. And this is what we call relay cycling. And this is the reason why on a cruising boat with disparate sized battery banks that we do not want to follow the blue sea instructions that come with it. And we want actually we want to really closely pay attention to those instructions because they very clearly say in there that if your banks are different sized or on a cruising boat with a heavily depleted larger house bank that all charging should should feed the house bank. But the problem is many people miss that in the instructions. And they do what I call the center console wiring, where battery banks are of equal size. And we can feed charging to the start battery because even when it combines it, the equal size bank, it'll come up to voltage, a voltage that it can maintain fairly quickly. But in this scenario we have a, where we have a heavily depleted house bank, um, it's going to take a long time of, of these 10 second current flows into that battery um, and I'm going to turn it off in rush here re-zero that so we can see here we go watch how fast this current um, as those batteries become parallel it takes voltage differences and there again we did not achieve 13 volts within the 10 seconds or 12.8 I believe it has to get to back to uh, within 10 seconds or the relay opens again um, but you can see how fast that current equalizes. And because this parallels above the fully charged resting voltage of a lead-acid battery, once these batteries become at parity voltage, current can only flow into the batteries. Because, again, we're above 13 volts. And 13 volts is above the rest, natural resting voltage of a battery bank. So, again, we can see, even within 10 seconds, how fast that current diminishes between banks when they're in parallel. And that's because these voltage numbers are getting closer and closer together. It takes voltage differences to move current. And when batteries in parallel, what happens is they will uh, find if this were to remain closed long enough and not continue to relay cycle like this. And that's because of its, it. This is an incorrect hookup. Um, and it's an incorrect hookup because we've fed the charge source to the small starting battery, not the larger house bank. So to avoid relay cycling, what you would want to do is wire your charge sources directly to the house battery. And then what happens is the house battery can charge. And when it gets to 13 volts, then it will combine with a fully charged start battery, or basically, you know, 99% full charge start battery. There are a couple benefits to this, and, and those are addressed in the article. But one of those is... As you saw, our maximum inrush current through the relay here was 172 amps. Um, and if that bank was heavily depleted and our alternator was feeding charge current through here, we could be t maxing out the capacity of this relay by feeding this bank first. However, if we reverse that and we put charging onto the house bank, when this comes up to 13 volts, it's going to combine with a battery bank that's already almost full. So we're only going to be passing a minimal current across this relay. And again, it, we're watching what is called relay cycling here. The charger is coming on. And what I've done here, uh, j just so you can see, um, I'm going to zoom up here. And what I've done is this is an actual scenario that I had on a customer's boat. It was a 10 amp charger. He put in a 300 plus amp hour house bank and an AGM start battery. And, all, and he fed his charger to the start battery. And... He would then run his loads, his refrigerator at the dock and everything like that. And he'd come back and find a depleted battery. That's because the refrigerator load was about five and a half amps, six amps. He left some other DC stuff going, iPad chargers, a computer plugged in. So a lot of the current uh, that was needed from the charger was going to feed the load. So really, in reality, he only had maybe three or four amps going into the batteries. 
And what happened is the relay just kept cycling and cycling and cycling. The easy fix for that was I simply took the charger lead and I moved it over to the house bank. And now, I mean, he still had those loads and he still really only had a three or four amp charger, which is grossly undersized for that bank. But that three or four amps could over time bring the battery bank up to 13 volts and then it would combine with a start battery and both batteries would get charged. So I hope this video allays any of those fears about these massive inrush currents that are going to explode batteries. And before we go, I just want to show you one more thing. And we, we talk about, um, you know, massive inrush currents, right? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm, I am going to put this on the starter motor and I'm going to show you what a typical starter amperage looks like. Now this is a, a 1KW starter right here. It goes on a Westerbeek engine. And I'm going to show you what the inrush, what the starter motor takes from the, the, the battery. That's it right there. 360 amps just to get it turning. Okay. And now this isn't even connected to a motor. So the inrush from a starter motor is far, far greater than any inrush we can create or any high current demand we can create with an ACR relay. Far higher. Um, as a matter of fact, if I turn this off of inrush, I'm just going to show you. Again, this is a, a 1KW starter motor in free air, not even starting a motor. And if I hold that, we can see that that starter, just to spin on the bench, takes about 100 amps. Okay? So, please don't get too concerned about the myth and lore surrounding high inrush currents uh, between, you know, between battery banks with an ACR. Parallel charging has been done for years. It's done in the in the rescue sector. It's done in the in the trucking industry. It's it's done uh, in the RV industry. It's done in the marine industry. It's done in heavy equipment. Uh, parallel charging is not a new concept. What is relatively new in the last 20 or so years is voltage sensing parallel charging, and that means that when this senses a charging voltage, it parallels the banks. But again. Um, yeah, we just timed out on my Fluke 289 here. Um, but again, we are still relay cycling this. So I hope this makes sense and, and consider, you know, this relay cycling, especially with low current charge sources. I see this repeated over and over and over again. Somebody installs a solar system and they're more, they, they, they focus on their start battery more than they should. A start battery really uses less than a half an amp hour to start a motor, considerably less if you actually do the math on that. So a typical start battery like this can start a motor well over 50 times and not even break a sweat. So all the concern about feeding your charging here first is going to create problems here, especially with low current charge sources like solar, wind, or something like that, because what you're going to get is this continual relay cycling. Um, so, on a cruising boat with an ACR, we feed charging to the house bank, then we let it combine and charge the start bank. We don't worry about this dangerous inrush uh, thing because we just saw with actual measurement devices that are capable of measuring the absolute peak, and this is not an inexpensive meter, uh, that, that, can, that shows you exactly how much current is transferred between banks. And as we can see, each of these 10 second bouts of 10 amps, right, is, is taking a very long time to get, get this voltage up. And, it, and it's, you know, to get to 13 volts where this will remain combined is going to take a while. So I hope this helps. Uh, please read the rest of the article on marinehowto.com. Uh, don't just rely on this video. There's a lot more information in the article than I can cover here in a short video. So hope that helps and uh, happy boating.